is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com here to do your weekly angel card reading for Monday, August 29th through Sunday, September 4th, 2016. So we're entering very shortly a new month and this new month is going to be a turning point. September has a lot of universal energies that are transforming and uh, going to bring us redirection. We have two eclipses in the month of September that we're going to be experiencing, a new moon solar eclipse, which we have this week, and a full moon lunar eclipse on September 16th. Plus, this is a nine universal month and a nine universal year. So I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but I do want to point out that you might want to go back and look at September's monthly angel card reading because this is such an important month. There's going to be a lot of information in that September monthly reading that will help you navigate the energies for this month. But as far as this weekly reading, we're going to be using Doreen Virtue's Angel Tarot card deck for our main message. And I decided because we do have a new moon solar eclipse this week that I would pull a extra special message card for everyone from the deck called Angel Answers by Doreen Virtue, and that's back here. Also, your special message card for this weekly reading is going to be coming from the Syrian Starseed Tarot deck by Patricia Corey and Alyssa Bartha. So let's take a look first at your stones of choice before we get into the energies of the week. Your first stone of choice is Aventuring, and I chose all of these as bracelets here today. The Aventuring can come in different colors, but this one is a green color. And the Aventuring is really good for prosperity and abundance issues. It helps you to tap into the Divic realm, which is like the fairies and the gnomes and the water sprites. This is also good for stabilizing the mind. So as far as your thoughts being a little bit unbalanced or full of anxiety, this is going to help to stabilize the thoughts and the mind. It's going to help to enhance your perceptive abilities, and it's going to help to enhance creativity as well. Your second stone of choice, this is pearl, and this is freshwater pearl. And again, pearl can come in different colors, but this one is just the nice white freshwater pearl. And this stone is all about faith and integrity and about purity of body and mind. So if you're going through some health things with the physical body, this can help to purify the physical body. If you're going through, again, some lower ego types of thoughts that are not of the most positive nature, it can help to purify the mind and the thought processes as well. This can help with receiving clear guidance from the spiritual realm, and it helps to bring truth to different situations you might be going through in your life. And then the last stone of choice, this is Tiger Eye. And Tiger Eye is a beautiful brown stone, very grounding stone, a lot of earth energy with this stone. It helps to balance the lower chakras, especially the root chakra, um, but also can balance the sacral and the solar plexus. This is a good stone for protection energies. So protection from uh, outside influences of a negative nature. This can also help you with resolving dilemmas in your life. Uh, and so, you know, with some of the changing energies that are upcoming, this can help to maybe bring some resolution with some of the challenges that you're facing. So again, your stones of choice for this week are the Aventurine, the Freshwater Pearl, or the Tiger's Eye. So let's talk a little bit about the astrological energies for the month. Okay, so we start out on Monday, the 29th of August. And Mercury, the planet of the mind, the planet that rules our thoughts and communications, is at the very last degree of Virgo, the 29th degree of Virgo, and it's getting ready to turn retrograde. Um, and it comes together with the planet of Venus, also at the 29th degree of Virgo. Venus is, of course, a planet that rules love and relationships, money, finances. It rules our values, what we value in our life. It rules beauty. 
So here again we have, now this happens very early in the morning, so you're going to feel this Sunday, which is of course part of last week's reading, but you're going to feel this su Sunday as it's kind of building up because it happens very early in the morning Eastern time um, at the 29th degree. Now, this is going to, because Mercury is getting ready to go retrograde, which it does go retrograde on Tuesday the 30th, which is the very next day at, again, that last degree of Virgo, it's going to bring up, during this retrograde cycle, uh, issues, uh, things that we have to think about, things that we have to uh, review or reevaluate regarding again our values uh, you know that venus energy uh, we're going to we're going to be reviewing a lot of things during mercury retrograde and uh, you think about the the sign of virgo and what that's all about virgo is about purity and perfection virgo is about analyzing and thought processing and it's about uh, communication of the details or understanding the details or thinking about the details it's about taking small steps and using our powers of discernment with our mind. And so while Mercury is retrograde, as it goes retrograde Tuesday the 30th, for the next three weeks we're going to be reviewing and analyzing and restructuring and redoing things, just like any Mercury retrograde. But Virgo is one of the signs that Mercury actually rules. And so this Mercury retrograde, it's in its own sign, and it's really going to intensify that Virgo and kind of energy. And again, because it starts out with that conjunction on Monday the 29th, we're going to re be reviewing things in our lives that have to do with what do we really value? What do I value? What relationships do I value? What circumstances do I value? What thoughts and feelings do I want to feel that I value? So this is going to be a very uh, important time period. Now also on Monday, um, Venus, right after Mercury comes together with Venus at that last degree of Virgo, Venus actually then moves into the sign of Libra later that day on Monday. And of course, Libra is one of the signs that Venus rules. And so it's going to be very much at home here. Of course, Libra is all about relationships. It's all about balance and harmony. It's all about uh, compromise, diplomacy. Um, and this is different types of partnerships as well, romantic partnerships, business partnerships, one-on-one -on -one relationships. But Venus is going to be in Libra for a little while, and it's going to be really at home here. Then, of course, Tuesday, again, Mercury goes retrograde at that 29th degree of Virgo. So it never gets to Libra, and it retrogrades back in Virgo uh, for about three weeks, all the way back to 14 to 15 degrees of Virgo before turning direct later in September. Then the big thing that happens uh, this week is Thursday, the 1st of September, the very first day of September, we have a new moon solar eclipse at 9 degrees of Virgo. Now, this new moon solar eclipse is going to be very interesting and quite powerful uh, as far as soul growth and evolution is concerned. Now, a new moon is always about new beginnings. Solar eclipses, or even lunar eclipses, the eclipses heighten the energy of that new or full moon. So uh, there's an intensification of the Virgo energies here. It's at 9 degrees of Virgo. Again, that area of the chart that deals with, you know, the everyday details of life. Virgo rules health. You know, Virgo rules, again, our mind, our communication, the way we think, um, and the, the details of how we communicate. So the interesting thing about this, though, and why it's so powerful in a, in a way of spiritual evolution and growth is because this new moon solar eclipse at 9 degrees of Virgo conjuncts the north node at 12 degrees of Virgo, and the north node is a karmic point, a karmic turning point. It's, it's the point of moving into the future. That's what the north node is about. And, of course, at the same time, that the sun and the moon in Virgo conjunct the north node. Of course, it's got to be opposing the south node in Pisces along with Neptune in Pisces. So this is where we have that karmic turning point. And not only do we have this new moon solar eclipse, 
with the north and south node and with Neptune, but it's also squaring or challenging Saturn and Mars and Sagittarius. So Saturn, of course, is all about uh, karma, and it's about the lessons that we're here to learn. It's, it's Saturn is here to teach us something. It's, it's teaching us responsibility and to take responsibility for different aspects of our lives and learning certain things uh, in different aspects of our lives. And it's in the sign, of course, of uh, Sagittarius, where Mars is as well with Saturn. And Sagittarius is all about truth and freedom and uh, looking towards kind of our long-term uh, future, so to speak. So that coupled with, again, this north and south node activity, which is uh, the south node is all about the past and where we're coming from, and the north node is all about the future and where we're heading or where we're going towards. So this is why I say it's a powerful uh, solar eclipse, new moon solar eclipse, because it's really this turning point of of karmic redirection. I really feel there's going to be a huge karmic cleansing around this time. I feel like the whole month of September actually is a huge karmic cleansing and a karmic turning point. Um, and it's really going to be important as far as where we're going for the rest of this year. Now on Friday the 2nd of September, the Sun moves on to oppose Neptune. And Mercury retrograde is retrograding back now and conjuncts Jupiter again for the second time. And it's conjuncting Jupiter at 28 degrees of Virgo. So again, it's just this kind of extended energy um, of this new moon solar eclipse. Mercury conjuncting Jupiter can really expand our perceptions on Friday to help us uh, gain a different kind of perspective on things or to gain more information, expand our, our view about certain aspects of our lives or circumstances going on in our lives. Of course, with the Sun square Saturn and Sun opposing Neptune, part of that solar eclipse energy on Thursday and Friday, there's still going to be some confusing energies here. You know, we're going to feel, I feel very, I feel like we're going to feel challenged as far as making certain redirections in our life. I feel like a lot of us know what those redirections need to be, but squaring Saturn, it gives us a little bit of insecurity as far as, you know, taking that redirection or making that decision to move down a different path. And of course, with the Sun opposing Neptune, we're, we still have a little bit of uncertainty if it's really the right thing for us to do. But as we move through the month of September, it was as we move really into October and November, we're going to have things become more clear to us. But right now, it's still a little bit of that taking a uh, jump of faith, you know, kind of taking that leap of faith into the void, if you will, without really knowing, you know, if we're if we're making the right choice. But the, the thing is, is that we're always making the right choice. When we, when we make a decision, when we make some sort of movement, we can't make a wrong choice. So sure, we might, you know, we might decide something and we're, we're always learning. We're always learning something as we're moving forward. And there's really no right or wrong, but there's just growth. That's what I think. There's just growth on our evolutionary path. All right, so let's take a look at the cards for the week and see what our angels have to say. We start out with the Seven of Air, okay. And the Seven of Air, let me read what it says at the bottom, says, plans that need revision, more going on than meets the eye, poor timing, okay. So that kind of sums up Mercury retrograde in a nutshell, okay. There's more going on behind the scenes than we really know, um, it's kind of a poor time to start anything new or sign any contracts because of the Mercury retrograde. Um, and there's, there's things that need to be reviewed and things that need to be revised. That's all Mercury retrograde stuff. So I'm really not surprised at all to see this card. The number seven is about deep um, inner soul searching. That's the way I look at the number seven. It's about going within and kind of searching out your own inner guidance and inner wisdom. And of course with the air suit, we're talking about on the mental level. So we're talking about going in and kind of looking at what our thoughts are. This a lot of times can be our negative thoughts, um, 
thoughts that we have that are not supportive of ourselves or of our direction. It's about doubts and fears. So I think that, you know, we're going to start out this week and again with this Mercury retrograde and the eclipses this month, we're going to have these doubts and fears if we're, you know, making the right decision. And again, I think a lot of us are just so confused with our thoughts. We just really don't know where to go. And what I'm going to say is that you don't have to make any decisions right now. I mean, some of you may feel like you do, and maybe you're in circumstances where a decision does have to be made. But I'm going to say that if you can wait until Mercury retrograde is over, until these eclipses are over, to wait to see how the the dice roll or the you know dominoes fall, so to speak, if you can wait until the air clears, then I think you're going to have a lot better perspective of what decisions need to be made. And, and a lot of times the universe will end up directing you or making the decisions for you and kind of take you off the hook, so to speak. And if there's any month that that's going to happen, it's going to be this month where the eclipse energies happen. So let me see if there's anything else they want to say. You know, I think that's good for this card. So let's take a look at the second card as we move throughout the week. Okay, this is good. This is Major Arcana number two and the High Priestess with Archangel Haniel. And the message at the bottom says, listen to your intuition, have patience, consider carefully what you want before acting. Well, that's just kind of a follow-up of the seven of air. As I just said, if you can wait it all until Mercury retrograde is over and the eclipses are over, that's going to be good. The other message from this card, though, is again sort of like the seven of air where I talked about the number seven of going within and doing some inner soul searching. This is kind of the same thing where you have to listen to that inner guidance, your inner intuition. And you know when when making a decision or a choice, this is really saying that you should listen to what your heart says. Listen to um, the messages from your angels and guides, but most importantly, listen to your inner guide. So this is about psychic perception instead of mental perception. This is basically saying that you don't want to necessarily listen to the logical mind because our logical mind is going to say, well, this is the only thing that makes sense, or if I don't do this, it doesn't make any sense, um, or it's not logical to do this. But the high priestess is saying it's not about logic, it's not about the mind, it's not about what you're thinking, it's about what you're feeling. So what do you feel? Does this feel right? Does this energy feel right to you? Does this direction feel right to you? And this is where you really have to go. And I feel like, you know, you should call on Archangel Haniel um, when you're in that confusing state because Archangel Haniel is going to help to give you that clarity on a psychic perception level that perhaps you are looking for and that you're needing. Let me see if there's anything else here that they want to bring forth. Okay, I feel like there's more, uh, they're talking about more research to be done on certain things. So um, this might be about career matters. Um, it could be it could be about financial or relationship matters too, but I just feel like there's more practical types of research that can be done. And they're saying to merge that practical research with the intuitive guidance again of your heart and soul. Um, but I feel like there's just more information that you have to search out or look for or read about or talk to other people about to gain um, more of a more details or more of a clear perspective on things. All right, let's look at this last card here. And this says, oh, this is Major Arcana, number 10, the Wheel of Fortune with Archangel Michael. I always love this card. And this says, a time of positive change, a situation suddenly moves forward and fortune is on your side. So this, this is a wonderful, wonderful sign, and this is really um, indicative of this new moon solar eclipse that we have. Of course, again, new moons, new beginnings, the wheel of fortune, the wheel of fortune is turning, and there's a, a karmic turn of the wheel. That's what I feel like, is there's this karmic turn of the wheel, and we're releasing and purging and getting ready to move forward into new energies and new beginnings and new directions. 
and Archangel Michael is leading the way. He's helping you to pull cords and release old situations and circumstances. He's helping you to release um, old emotions and thoughts and belief systems that you no longer need. And I feel like he's talking about balancing energies too. I'm really drawn to the fact that there's four different colored circles around this Wheel of Fortune. So I really feel like balance is a strong term to focus on right now, to, to do what you can to stay in balance because I feel like we're going to be knocked off of our center during these eclipses a little bit and we're going to need a sense of grounding and a sense of balance. So if you need to meditate, if you need to get out in nature, um, if you need to gather with uh, other friends that are supportive of you, do whatever you can to stay balanced during this time period. But this is a very positive indication that positive change is on the way. And they're telling me that the positive changes are going to come a little bit later. So this is just the initiation of those positive changes, but it's going to be some time as everything starts to unfold uh, before you start to understand and see what those positive changes are. All right, so let's take a look at this special message card for everyone from the Angel Answers deck. Okay, this is Compromise, and if you can look at this card, um, this angel is actually holding uh, the scales, and so it reminds me of Libra, and Libra is again about balance. Libra is all about balance and compromise, and this is exactly what this um, this card says, is we might need to um, balance ourselves, we might need to compromise with others, uh, perhaps there's something here regarding relationship matters or communications with others, um, they're talking about work situations where you might need to compromise or business associations where you might need to compromise. Um, and make sure that there's an equal give and take going on here that you're receiving as well as giving and, and that the other person is also balanced in their uh, ability to give and receive as well. Um, I feel like we they're talking about people disagreeing and even in relationship matters that we want to make sure that um, that the other person's uh, needs or things that are going on with with the other person that we're listening to that that we're taking that into consideration that we're um, understanding that our relationships no matter what kind of relationships they are, are just a reflection of ourselves and what's going on within ourselves and to always be you know fair to always be fair and balanced with again this giving and receiving and what we're doing uh, in regards to others. And again, I really feel like some of this might be in romantic relationships too. There's maybe some decisions that have to be made, but there's a need to also understand that that other person, you know, is a human being with feelings as well and that we need to put ourselves in their shoes and to communicate with them in the most loving and balanced way as we possibly can as we're again making certain decisions and redirections in our own life alright so let's go ahead and see what your special message card is depending on your stone of choice so for those of you that chose the adventuring let's give this a little bit of a shuffle and we're asking for the message for adventuring people okay this one is sticking up so adventuring people Wow, the Three of Chalices. Wonderful card. This is all about celebration. It's about fun. It's about beauty. It's about gathering with groups of, of people that you're emotionally connected to. It's about rejoicing. It's about um, things happening in your life that you are very happy and joyful and thankful for, like um, new beginnings as far as a promotion or new birth or a party you know this is just all about fun but it's a, it's about the emotional fun it's about feeling really good so I feel like you know for you this week I feel like they're saying to focus on what gives you joy um, you know through again some of these chaotic energies to focus on circumstances and situations 
that bring you happiness and joy and focus on that love aspect. Focus on the positive feelings. And really, I feel like gathering with friends. I feel like connecting with your friends are very important right now because it's going to give you this aspect of not only fun and enjoyment, but it's going to give you an aspect of support as well as you're moving through some of these energy times. But there might be something, you know, like, I don't know, this can be about a party or, um, you know, some sort of, um, like, new birth or positive thing in some sort of emotional relationship that you have. So this is a very, very good sign. All right. Let's take a look at, for those of you that chose the freshwater pearl, let's ask for that message, this one here. So freshwater pearl, you have the seeker of crystals, okay? And the seeker of crystals, this is... Um, the page, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the seeker. So we're talking about the page of earth. And I feel like here we're talking about um, messages. She's looking at a crystal ball here. So I feel like there's some sort of message that's coming to you. But with this being the crystal suit or the earth suit, it's usually a message from a practical source. So somebody that you know. Um, I feel like some of you are getting some sort of... Uh, message or information regarding a, a new job or a promotion at a job they're saying. So good things that are coming as far as messages about your career. And again, this is from uh, practical real sources. Also, they're talking about, um, I feel like some of you are doing some writing um, and they're talking about this is a good time to continue with the writing or complete the writing. Mercury is retrograde, so you can go over and review and reorganize your thoughts and, and redo some of the things that you're working on. If some of you are developing um, like workshops or classes or something of that nature, and this is also um, a message to move forward with that as well. Let me see if there's any other message here. I feel like um, the information that's coming forth, um, they're saying that for some of you, it might not be what you expected, but it is good. Whatever, whatever the messages that are coming to you this week, uh, again, some of you, it might not be what you expected, but it's going to be good for you in the long run is what they're saying. All right, let's put that down. And then for those of you that chose the... Tiger Eye. Okay, so Tiger Eye people looking for a message. Tiger Eye. Tiger Eye is the Five of Flames. Okay, so the Five of Flames, this is a spiritual energy. It's the fire energy. And usually it means that there's a lot going on uh, spiritually or creatively. But a lot of times it can be a little chaotic. So I don't feel like this is a real negative, although a lot of times when we see the five in the tarot deck, it usually means uh, chaotic energies, and a lot of people you know, look at that as negative. But they're saying this isn't negative, it's just scattered. So I feel like there's a lot going on, there's scattered energy, there's things coming at you from many different directions. So it's just about, again, balancing your energies, making sure that you're grounded, making sure that you're clear and secure. Um, so really do what you can here to kind of balance yourself with all of these many things that are happening and going on. It can feel a little chaotic, but again, I don't feel like it's negative. I feel like there's a lot of creative aspects with the energies. So I feel like um, I feel like you're just being pulled in a lot of different directions right now. Uh, family, career, finances, relationships. You know, I just feel like there's a lot of changes that are happening, they're saying. A lot of changes on the spiritual level that are happening. So just stay balanced as you move forward. So I hope you've liked this weekly angel card reading. Um, if you do like this, please like and comment and share and subscribe to the channel. And again, look at that monthly angel card reading Visit me on Facebook under Colleen Lemma or Sacred Soul Empowerment for my daily astrological and empowering Facebook posts. And until next week, I send you all much love and light and many, many angel blessings.